Good evening everyone, time for another Bitcoin report. This is the 4-hour chart from ClarkMoody.com and you can see we're getting a bit of a rally here. Bitcoin's trading about 104 to 105 and uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the market action that we're seeing here. Before we do that I want to take a look at the market depth just to remind you the way you use this tool at Clark Moody is you you click on your controls show controls and you can put a check in group by price and I group by five dollar increments the reason why and then a thousand rows and the reason why is to see the the market depth now what's fascinating about the market depth when we look at it here is we can see when we go all the way out we've got about a hundred and 7,000 bitcoins. Now we want to follow that back up and see where it starts to change significantly. You can see we still got 105, 106, 105, so not a real change. Here's where we get a drop off now, about 104 to 101 at about a price of $1,500 a bitcoin. So that's <laughs> pretty steep here. At 1,000, we've got 100,000, and uh, we're staying up there. And this is our, our real drop off here, starts to come right in here at 335 down to 300 and then down uh, when we get down to 200 you can see we've only got about 55,000 bitcoins offered that is fascinating because if you look over here you can see when we go down to the five dollar price we've got bids on 541,000 bitcoins and uh, even if we jump all the way up to seventy dollars a bitcoin seventy dollars a bitcoin we have a hundred and sixteen thousand bitcoins being bid at seventy dollars a bitcoin and that is more than all the bitcoins offered at any price so that's fascinating and i think that's actually going to back up my contention here and i'm going to show you this from the clark moody chart and uh, the main theme is going to be Bitcoin resistance and the reason why is for those of you who aren't um, traders looks like we've reconnected to Mt. Gox it's getting a little wild and crazy right now at 105 uh, now we're at 106 so we're getting a, a real strong rally here 107 uh, let's go into the minute here it looks like we got a big jump here so we've got kind of a breakout now what I wanted to show you on the four hour chart here is the support and resistance. Now for those of you who aren't traders and don't really understand market uh, technicals, uh, for me technical analysis is really very simple. Uh, there's a lot of very complex indicators that you can use and there's some very simple indicators. The simple indicators that I prefer to use are moving average crossover divergence. Uh, that's these two lines here um, and uh, generally when they cross you can see here uh, you got a sell signal on the Bitcoin at about 190 if you took that sell signal and of course this is just on the timeline you're looking at it changes as you change the timeline but if you would have taken that sell signal at about 190 uh, you're not going to get a buy signal until right about here so that's a pretty good trade based on that simple technical indicator. Now, a much more important technical indicator is going to be support and resistance. For those of you who aren't familiar with support and resistance, it's really a very simple concept. It has to do with human nature. And that is that uh, people who uh, have purchased at a very high price after there's been a significant fall are often looking to get out at even. That's what causes market resistance. So for example, you have a bunch of people who bought Bitcoins up in here, near $200. And of course, those people took a big bath. Now, I, I guess probably human nature being what it is, a lot of them actually sold out here at 50, and just couldn't stand the pain anymore. Of course, uh, that's the epitome of bad trading because they didn't have a fundamental view. Uh, but there, uh, then again, there's a lot of other people who, who've got their Bitcoins. They still have them. 
They bought them at 200 and they're showing a paper loss of nearly $100 a coin. And uh, these people make up the overhead resistance. These are the people who uh, made a decision, it turned out to be the wrong decision, and they're waiting overhead to sell into the rally. So the way you gauge overhead resistance is you look at the past price action to determine how many people have made that quote unquote mistake. Of course, if we go into new highs, then uh, none of it will have been a mistake. But if we look at the prices at those points here, some really important things come out here. First of all, we can see that the bulk of the sell-off, the price sell-off, was at this point here. And that actually lines up with this little, these two little volume spikes. What's very interesting about that is those two little volume spikes are actually dwarfed by these volume spikes here and by these volume spikes here. So you can see that uh, whoever sold at this point to this point and this point to this point, we've actually worked off all of that resistance. So what that means is the people who sold there if they haven't gotten back in they've already sold into this rally and uh, it's blue skies ahead that's why you see the price racing the way it is so really when you look at the overhead resistance we really don't have that much we have people from back in here to up here that are sitting at a loss still but the volume of where they got in is not nearly as much as the volume that we've already overcome so this does not look to me like a crash. A crashed market, as uh, Jesse Livermore once said, uh, uh, who's the father of all technical trading, he said that uh, when you have a bear market and you have the dead bodies or a dead cat bounce, uh, in a true bear market, those dead bodies, they have to go down and stay down for a long time to make sure they're really dead. That's what you get in a real bear market. It just goes down and then it just stays down for a long time and just stays dead for a long time. That's what you see in the Nikkei stock uh, index. Uh, that's what you saw in the NASDAQ after it hit 5,000. Had to go down for a long time. I'm starting to think now with this rally, strength rally in the Bitcoin, that that's not what we're looking at in the Bitcoin. And uh, I am willing to venture a guess that we are actually going to be revisiting this 266 high um, maybe in the next couple months because there just isn't really a lot of overhead resistance on this. Now, the other issue with the overhead resistance, you have to remember that overhead resistance is really only valid uh, when you're talking about traders because uh, traders are people who buy a market because it's going up or they sell a market because it's going down. They're people who are looking to make a, a profit, a quick profit, or maybe a short-term or long-term profit, but they're looking to make a profit. Now, I have suggested that a very large number of these buyers on this run-up may actually be very small players who just want to get a taste of the Bitcoin. Now, if I'm right on that, if a lot of these people getting into the market are just buyers who want one or two Bitcoins and they just want to get involved with this new thing, do you really think they're going to sell their Bitcoins when it gets back to the price that they bought it at? Or do you think that a lot of these people are going to decide, you know what, hey, I was right. Uh, I wasn't right in my timing because I could have bought down here at 50 but you know what? I was right in my concept. I was right that this Bitcoin really is something that is going to get legs. It's going to go for quite a while. And I actually might be in on sort of a bottom here. So that's what I think is going on right now. And uh, I think that the overhead resistance is going to turn out to be much weaker than a lot of people supposed. And uh, if that's the case, you're going to find a lot of Bitcoin critics with egg on their face. Now, I pointed out this moving average crossover, and we are crossing over, which is a reversal of this sell signal that we had at 200. How far and how fast we're going to run, I can't say, 
this price here at 150 this is going to be a big price that's the bulk of the selling where it came in that's the bulk of the resistance but uh, with the Bitcoin uh, this is a new market this is a tiger so it could run there very very quickly and then when we add in the fact that the number of bitcoins for sale is surprisingly thin you can see it's down to 105 and uh, I think it was 107 when I started this video so there is voracious buying coming into the Bitcoin and uh, that leads us over to the other issue that we're going to talk about we we'll look at some questions but uh, one question the first one is about new exchange hey brother John F I'm ex so excited I can't sit still uh, just wanting some guidance regarding your first couple of steps and setting up an exchange for cryptocurrencies. Of course, if you don't know specifics, point me in the right direction. We'll take care of the rest. Thanks for all you do. Holding the flag for freedom in Australia. Well, <laughs> I can't help you there because I'm not a programmer. And uh, I just don't know about it. I have just, I'm looking, I'm trying to read the tea leaves here. And what I'm seeing is that there's a lot of people interested in this thing. Uh, now, the big news, of course, is uh, going to be uh, the news about BitFloor shutting down. This is a uh, tongue-in-cheek Tyler, and you know I've covered Tyler before. Uh, Tyler's a re re uh, reluctant silver uh, reporter, and uh, I talked about silver on Zero Hedge, and uh, nobody on there even wanted to talk about it. Same thing with the Bitcoin, but... Uh, Eventually, Tyler will come along because his readers are going to drag him there. But you can see the tongue-in-cheek uh, sniping here. We'll read this. In an amusing development, one of the key alternative Bitcoin exchanges, BitFloor, has just announced it is forced to shut down immediately. It is amusing because one of the primary reasons attributed by the BTC pundits for the recent crash from 260 to 50 was errors and faults in the primary Bitcoin exchange, Mt. Gox. Well, with alternative exchanges forced to shut down, this may mean that only faulty marketplace will seize its monopoly power increase further. It is also ironic because BitFloor disclosed it, quote, can no longer provide the same level of U.S. dollar deposits and withdrawals as we have in the past. Whatever happened to decentralized and unencumbered by legacy fiat currencies? Well, that's just a stupid statement. We're talking about an exchange. We're talking about a business that's clearly going to be regulated by FinCEN. We know that with FinCEN's clarification. Uh, I'm very appreciative of what FinCEN did. They made it very, very clear. If you're going to get into the business of exchanging Bitcoin for dollars, you're going to have to uh, deal with FinCEN's Know Your Customer Limitations and Anti-Money Laundering rules uh, that's very clear they've made that very clear now if you want to set up an exchange that doesn't touch the real currencies that's the dollar and again that's a little in my opinion a little bit of overreach uh, by FinCEN and uh, I think that's going to be a sticking point moving forward that uh, FinCEN is claiming jurisdiction over all real currencies we're going to see that when we look at BTC-E but uh, Again, that's a bogus criticism. So uh, we can see here that uh, well, we'll finish reading. In other news, and from the main and apparently only remaining Bitcoin exchange, we get Dear Mt. Gox customers, we are currently experiencing a downtime and we'll update as soon as possible. Apologies for the delay with electronic market limbo. At least demand for physical Bitcoins appears to be solid to quite solid. Oh, wait. So um, that's not surprising that Tyler would come out with that of course Tyler's going to be proven to be dead wrong we'll see if he can admit it so uh, the Bitcoin price is really uh, taking off here and uh, I think we're going to find out that when we do get to these red candlesticks here that the support and resistance uh, I'm sorry the resistance is not what uh, people expect it to be uh, that this was a sell-off in a thin market the market was thin because of DDoS, and that means a lot of players didn't get to act. And I think a lot of the players probably wanted to buy. Uh, and so 
Uh, this is going to be very exciting as we come back and test how real this resistance is as we get to that 150 price and beyond. But let's uh, go over and take a look here at this question about these other exchanges. Now, the one I've covered is BTC-E. Now, this is a Russian exchange. Uh, you can see here that they trade Russian rubles for bitcoins. They trade euros for bitcoins and they trade dollars for bitcoins. Now, of course, the dollar bitcoin is going to be the primary market. Uh, and you can see here that we have 95. Let's do a refresh. Just uh, there, there's some cookie issues with that exchange. So now you can see we're bid 99 by 98. Now you would ask, well, why, why the divergence between the two markets? Um, you can see it's actually a very tight market. As far as uh, between bid and ask, we've got uh, uh, 99 and 98.6. So the question is going to be, why is this so different from Mt. Gox? I think the explanation is going to be the difficulty in getting dollars onto this Russian exchange. And that's going to get to that issue of FinCEN. Does FinCEN have authority over a Russian Bitcoin exchange? I don't know. You tell me. But when we look at the market depth here, you can see the total Bitcoins are about 16,000. Uh, the, the bid in dollars is about a million or so. Uh, that does not equal that number. So uh, that if you divide that by the current price, you get about 11,000 or so, 10,000, 11,000 Bitcoins. So we don't have that many dollars sitting on this Rus Russian exchange bidding for these Bitcoins. Hence we see a lag for the Mt. Gox price. Now, could that be an arbitrage opportunity? Absolutely. Uh, you could be selling Bitcoins on Mt. Gox right now and buying Bitcoins on this exchange and locking yourself in, uh, what would that be? Uh, you'd be locking in seven, eight dollars. Uh, but again, to do that type of arbitrage, to be a real player in arbitrage, you're gonna have to have uh, a good amount of money on Mt. Gox. You're going to have a good amount of money on uh, on on Mt. Gox. And uh, you're going to have to have a good amount of Bitcoins on BTC-E and money as well. So you're going to have, have to have large amounts of money and Bitcoins on both exchanges. That's going to allow you to arbitrage these markets. Uh, how many people actually have that? I don't know. And that certainly doesn't apply to me because as I've told you in my video One Way Street, I, I never intend to trade back into dollars with my Bitcoins. I, I don't intend to subject myself to FinCEN regulations and I don't intend to subject myself to IRS uh, uh, tax rules with my Bitcoins. So, But definitely I do believe that there are going to be a lot of players coming online. Now, the recent interview with uh, Jeff Berwick, he did hint at the fact that as well as opening these ATMs, these Bitcoin ATMs all around the world, and he's looking for uh, investors, although he doesn't need them, he's also uh, talking about opening an exchange. And I think there are a lot of people uh, looking at opening exchanges. So I think probably with the next six months or so, uh, you will be surprised at the number of exchanges coming online. Now, they're already quasi-exchanges. I have some coins on Coinbase. Um, I can buy or sell on Coinbase. Yes, it's not the most liquid, but there are a lot of places you can buy and sell Bitcoins. Uh, they're not the most liquid exchanges. But I think that you will see in the very near future, I think you're going to see uh, probably a large number of new exchanges coming online and uh, that's probably going to be a concern for Mt. Gox. They're definitely going to have to step up their game if they want to keep that going. So let's do some more questions here. Here's accepting Bitcoins in real business from Bits. Hi BJF, been a long time follower. Thank you for all you do. Question regarding how businesses can apply Bitcoins for real world transactions. I would like to accept Bitcoins for payment. However, the volatility would affect my inventory cost as well as my customers, especially when the price can fluctuate 40% in eight hours as it has lately. How does a business remove this risk for themselves and their customer? Example, etc. Now, I don't really need to answer that. It's already been answered. It's BitPay. 
and the concept is really simple uh, all you have to do is have a third party that immediately converts uh, those bitcoins into another currency as soon as the transaction is received and accepted by the buyer and the seller it's immediate immediately converted into another currency that currency could be dollars that currency could be euros that currency could be yen that currency could actually be gold or silver and uh, in that case then uh, FinCEN rules would not apply so uh, until the Bitcoin stabilizes, and I do believe the Bitcoin is going to stabilize. And uh, what's interesting about that observation, and you can see we're now up to 111, so we've got a very, very strong rally in the Bitcoin, is that for the Bitcoin to stabilize, I think we're going to have to have a price near $1,000, and I think we're going to have to have a market cap uh, up around maybe billions and billions of dollars once the Bitcoin has a market cap of let's say 100 to 200 to 300 billion dollars and the price is very very high and it's very very liquid I think you're gonna start to see price stability but uh, that's gonna mean a very very high Bitcoin price so that's that question I think that question has already been answered people like BitPay and others have already thought of that issue and uh, they're already addressing it I think that a lot of other players as I pointed out Jeff Berwick talked about uh, bringing online some type of exchange but he also talked about uh, these other types of derivatives that you can have that uh, would be related to the Bitcoin uh, including things like insurance that have to do with the Bitcoin and uh, options futures a Bitcoin stock market well, now we know that Bitcoin stock market has already blown up and that has to do with uh, fraud and things like that but uh, with with a lot of serious venture capitalists looking at these things I think we're going to be talking about the next generation in derivatives and uh, Bitcoin stock markets uh, next question is from aspect Hello, Brother John F. Been watching your analysis for a while now. Thank you for making your videos and wanted to ask you the following question. From what I have observed over the last few days during the highly volatile days of Bitcoin is that Litecoin has been following Bitcoin's price curves, maintaining the same proportional changes towards U.S. dollar as did Bitcoin. From my observations, given that there are around 200 bots trading on BTC-E, my conclusion is that changes in Litecoin prices are the result of an arbitrage between these three currency pairs. It is clear that if the price of Bitcoin rises towards US dollar but remains the same towards Litecoin, Litecoin price towards US dollar will also rise. Same when it falls. From what I gather, until Litecoin breaks on its own, this will be the case of BTC-E. Bitcoin will continue influencing Litecoin prices. I was wondering what your thoughts on, are on this. Have a good day. So excellent question now the price of Litecoin is quoted in bitcoins so when we look at this Litecoin price here you can see we've got a tremendous Litecoin sell-off now this has been my experience with the Litecoin uh, that uh, when we see Bitcoin rallies we see uh, Litecoin uh, drops now remember that you're talking about Litecoins quoted in bitcoins if you want to see what the true value of the uh, the Litecoin is doing then you have to do the Litecoin US dollar and uh, you can see that even though we have the Litecoin dropping relative to the Bitcoin somewhat with this tremendous Bitcoin rally that we're seeing the Litecoin is still accelerating against the dollar so those are kinda complicated issues I don't think it, you can look down here and see this is the BTC-E uh, Litecoin dollar price and as far as I know this is one of the only exchanges where you can actually buy Litecoins with dollars you can see we have about three hundred thousand dollars bidding against a hundred and seventy four thousand Litecoins but uh, then again the volume just isn't that high uh, I don't think it's actually uh, this this uh, market that's uh, determining that move but rather it is the arbitrage of the uh, Bitcoin dollar uh, pairing so it's the money flowing into the Bitcoin 
the US dollars flowing into the Bitcoin primarily on the Mt. Gox exchange and then people using those Bitcoins to buy Litecoins uh, that's what's going to cause the arbitrage between the Bitcoin and Litecoin but uh, then we've seen in the past what I've observed is that as the Bitcoin tends to stabilize then some of the people who have Bitcoins decide to try to invest in one of the alternative cryptocurrencies and Litecoin is going to be the first one so we have a very very strong rally this is what I would have predicted uh, had I known and I didn't know but I was just looking when we started here at these resistance levels and you can see we have pretty much liquidated the bulk of the res resistance levels that we have the high volume resistance levels are already behind us and we're only looking for resistance that runs between 111 and 160 uh, between on these two bars and you can see it's very very light so uh, it's quite possible that with the resistance being this thin and with with the market depth being as thin as it is uh, and now we're down to on the depth Wow, we're down to 32,000. Now, my depth figures have changed, so I'll have to refresh that. But uh, with the market depth getting much thinner, the resistance getting much thinner, uh, this rally really could have legs. And if we get through this price of 150 here, look out. We may take out the old highs very, very fast. And we'll talk to you next time.